Obviously on dangerous women. I think I mentioned to you that the last time anyone saw him was when a customer ordered some chicken fried steak. Yeah, and you said that uh, Esther said she was going to see if George had any, and that's the last time they were seen. I'm afraid they're still at the diner. We found them in the freezer. Were they dead? Yes, Crystal, they were dead. Then how the hell would she know there were millions in an old boat down in Goddard's bait shop? And it's still there. A Cronin can't move that money as long as Jerry is suspicious. Good. Has something gone wrong, Mr. Cronin? Nothing for you to worry about, Mrs. Johnson. You did get that material from the boat, didn't you? Some, but not all. But we know who took it, and we'll catch up with them. I might as well share this with everyone. I am not Rita Jones, okay? I am Roxy Lawrence, her sister. Oh, no, not two of you. But you know what's important now? Well, well, well. What do we have here? service all your tenants like this. You're my only tenant. So is that no special? Oh yeah, you're special always. You know, I'm surprised that you health fanatic types still have vices like this. <laughs> if you don't. Oh, I do. I just fess up to mine. Look, you're here to give me a massage, right? That's all you really want? Oh, my back needs it bad. I I got a muscle down there that... Ah! Oh. Oh, yeah? Oh. I hit the spot? Oh, boy, did you ever hurt. Well, that's good. I aim to please. <sighs> now, what about your legs? I mean, after all that running this morning, you must be pretty sore down in here. Hey, keep above the Mason-Dixon line. And be different from all the other guys? Uh, what other guys? You really want us all believing that you're a good girl, don't you? Um, I am a good girl. Save it for your niece. Who the hell do you think you are? I'm a new friend who knows you very well. That's supposed to tell me. Bad girls turn you on. A hamburger for breakfast. Or is that a Captain Crunch? You are so weird, Ricky. Watch your depths, I won't uh, help you out with driver's ed. All right. Threaten me like that again, and I won't tell you the good news. What? From now on, your mom can supply you with all the cereal that you want. How? Get over to the end. She just won the lottery. What? How much? A million dollars. Are you Are you kidding? I heard it with my own ears. One million dollars. <laughs> uh, thanks for telling me. No problem. Oh, man, I can't believe it. A million bucks. <laughs> so what are you all going to do with all that money? First off, I'm going to give Ricky anything he wants. Maybe I can't make up for 17 years of separation, but a million bucks can't hurt. <laughs> you know what I want to do? Travel. Oh, honey, yes. I want to go to Vegas again, too. Someplace a little more exciting than that, huh? Bali or Tahiti? Mmm, that sounds romantic. Mm. Yeah, making love under the swaying palm trees. Of course, mm -hmm. once we're not celibate anymore. Is it true? 
If you mean, are we rich? You bet. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, the money's just as much yours as it is mine and Randy's. Is that cool with you? Sure, Ricky. All right. <laughs> you know, you two even look like Thurston and Lovey Howe. He watches way too much television. <laughs> so, Ricky, what did Brad have to say? Oh, he doesn't know yet. He had to leave early this morning, get some pictures developed. So who's mining the bait shop? Oh, I completely forgot. Well, I guess I can forgive you. Just this once. <laughs> okay, well, I better get going. Oh, when do we get the money? Today. We just have to turn in the ticket. <laughs> Excellent. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> well, this is kind of amazing. So you two are the only winners, right? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. There could be others. Well, it doesn't matter. Even if you have to share a million dollars, it's still a lot of money. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we'll leave you all to make your plans. Thanks. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks, Bye. Mrs. Meadows. Yeah, Joe. Thanks. You know, now that we're millionaires, I wonder if kissing will feel any different. I don't know. Maybe we should try and find out. Randy, no, you gotta remember our celibacy pledge. The crystal. Millionaires are not. Jeez, and I thought they said the rich were different. Well, second piece of good news today. John Randall got the try just drop. Oh, 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 wonderful. Oh. They're not sending me back to prison. Ah, I'm really happy for you, sissy. Oh, and I owe it all to Patricia. She's the one who insisted I hire John Randall. Well, now we have Maria to thank, too. She's the one that convinced him to take the case. If only he could have cleared Rita, too. Yeah, I know. Maybe then she could deal with her sister herself. Why? What's her to deal with? Well, plenty, if you believe what Rita told Sissy. Since when do you listen to Rita? I don't trust Roxy myself. Why not? Instinct. Well, that's really not fair. The woman deserves a chance, doesn't she? Oh, uh, you're probably right. Well, look, I gotta get down to the bait shop and see if Ricky's got everything under control. Right, great idea. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Bye, sis. Bye. Now you don't actually believe that we owe Roxy a chance, do you? Oh, Rita would probably kill me if she heard me say this. I actually promised her that I would keep Debbie away from Roxy. But I don't know, Patricia. It, it Somehow it seems unfair. Not to me. I got pretty good at sizing up people on the inside. And from the very beginning, I got the feeling that Roxy Lawrence was real bad news. Hey, Roxy! Guess what? <laughs> Randy and I just won the lottery. What? You're <laughs> kidding! How much? <laughs> A million bucks. <gasps> oh, that's incredible. You didn't even have to spend the night in the kino parlor to get it. Isn't it great? Yes. Listen, I know this fellow in Vegas who's brilliant. Now, if you ever need investment advice, you call him. Well, thanks, Roxy. Listen, I'm going to call the state lottery people and make sure there was nobody else with our number. Sure, honey, you do that. You know, I was just telling Randy about Vegas. I figure with me as his good luck charm and another two dollars, we could win another millionaire, too. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Johnson, would it be possible to get a late lunch brunch, whatever? Oh, I still have your yogurt and oat bran. And I was hoping for something a little more substantial. That run gave me an appetite. Follow me. What's wrong, honey? Uh, there was a few other people with our number. Yeah, how few? 178. What? Oh, no. Oh, what a lousy break. <sighs> the lottery guy said it's never happened before. Well, if we have to split our winnings with 178 other people, what's our split? After taxes, $5,233.35. Oh, what good is that? Well, it's more money than we woke up with this morning. Damn, we better go collect it before there's nothing left of it. And I better tell Ricky the bad news. Too bad, isn't it? Yes. I'll get your iced tea.
I'd expect to see you behind the bar. At your usual post, isn't it? Well, I get around, you might say. <laughs> you do, do you? Would you mind telling Mrs. Johnson I need to see her? Certainly. You'll have to remind me of your name, Mr. What are you doing here? Mrs. Johnson. What is it you want? May I see you? You listen to me. You have no further business here. There's nothing more I can tell you. You said that a few weeks ago. Now I'm not so sure. If you think you can threaten my family again... Not at all, Mrs. Johnson. This is just a conversation between friends. You are hardly my friend, Mr. Cronin. Mrs. Johnson, you helped me before. I hope you can help me again. You do realize that if Joe or Mrs. Meadows see you here... Well, here's Mrs. Meadows now. Mr. Cronin. I keep stopping people in their tracks. Should I take this person there? What brings you to uh, Cedar Lake? I wanted to speak to Mrs. Johnson. But I wanted to do so privately, and she's unwilling. Can you blame her? But I promised she has nothing to fear. Why don't we uh, talk about this in my living room? Always the most gracious of ladies, aren't you? This way, please. Why do you continue harassing Mrs. Johnson? I have one simple question. After Tony Osario confided in you, who else did you tell about my money? No one. Except Mrs. Meadows here. What? It's not news to her. Obviously, she knows. All right. But Sissy didn't say a word to me till after you discovered that some of the money was missing. Is that so? Yes, it is. She had to talk to someone, Mr. Cronin. She's not used to being threatened by thugs. Now, you listen to me. I am a businessman. I am not a thug. So that was uh, corporate money that was stolen. Yes. And now my corporation wants it back. Well, I don't know what we can do to help you. My late employee... Tony Orsario, whom you all knew so well, stole $20 million from me. By the time I got my hands on the money, there was only $10 million left. Somebody, somebody stole half of it. And now it's floating around again. And I don't believe that Captain Goddard or Al have it. looking for Sissy and Mrs. Meadows. I just tried to see them myself. They're in there with a gentleman. Well, I hope they're not too long. I want to show them my bridal veil. Oh, you're getting married. On Christmas Eve. Here, I've got to show it to someone. Isn't it beautiful? It's very chic. Very chic. The dress needs another fitting, but it's going to be beautiful, too. Maria designed it. She's a friend of Rita's. How nice. You know, I'll just have to wait until Mrs. Meadows and Sissy come out. I swear to you, Mr. Cronin, besides Mrs. Meadows, I told no one. And by the time I knew, the money was already missing. So we really can't help you find the thief. You're assuming I believe you. You know how important my family is to me. Do you think I would lie? Yes, I do. If you've decided that $10 million is worth their lives... Are you accusing Sissy of taking your money? Or you? You are out of your mind. Neither one of us would endanger innocent lives just for money. And that's all we have to say, Mr. Cronin. 
This meeting is over. I'm still waiting for that club sandwich and some more iced tea. Get it yourself. There's no reason for you to come back, Mr. Cronin. Ever. And if I do? You don't frighten us. Let me warn you, Mrs. Meadows. My corporation will stop at nothing to retrieve this money. In some corporation you work for. I will be back. When's he showing up again? I think he's gone for good. Why? Did you finally tell him where the money was? He got me thinking, Patricia. If Al and Goddard don't have it, and since Rita couldn't since she was in prison when it was stolen, that leaves only you and me who knew where the money was. The only two that we know of. Don't lie to me anymore, Faith. What? You stole that money, didn't you? When you came up with $10,000 out of nowhere for my bail, when you suddenly found another $50,000 to buy out Goddard, I should have put things together. You didn't get a loan from the bank. You didn't go to loan sharks. You stole back Cronin's drug money, didn't you? All right. Yes. Even though you knew he'd kill my family for it. He already promised that he wouldn't hurt Lorraine and the kids. I knew they wouldn't pin the theft on you, Sissy. You had an alibi. That doesn't seem to matter to him now. It was my money, Sissy. Harry lost his life for it. I had my face slashed. Oh, Patricia. I didn't do it without thinking. I figured if I only took half the money, that Ben would think that Tony had spent the rest of it or hidden it somewhere else. And that would be the end to it. And then when Goddard and... Al disappeared. I, I was sure that we were free and clear. We? We were never in this together. I used that money for you too, sissy. Not just to bail you out, but for John's legal fees. I would rather be back in women's state than to get mixed up with that money again. And I used it to save the inn. I used it for all of us, I swear to you. And it is my money. You lied to me again, Faith. And you put my life in danger. I didn't tell you to keep you out of danger. If you knew nothing, then there was nothing to hide from Ben. You've got to believe me, Sissy. I did this to help you. To help all of us. So, where did you hide it this time? It's better that you don't. Patricia! All right, I'll tell you this much. The money is safely hidden. No one is going to find it this time around. And the corporation is not going to get it back so they can use it to ruin more lives. I think I have to have some time for myself. Sissy! I don't think I can look at you now. You know, my mom was telling me that uh, one of the man she used to work for was a cryogenicist. A what? He freezes sick people and then thaws them out when they find a disease. <laughs> Sounds like a supermarket rag. It's not. It's totally legit. There's even a TV movie about it with Donna Mills. So anyways, my mom was saying that maybe when the Finleys thaw out... They're going to come back to life. I don't think so, Ricky. I don't think so. <laughs> it's just an idea. Mm. Uh, what's going to happen to the diner? Well, I don't know. The Finleys didn't own it. They just leased it. 
I know the renting agent wants to, you know, get somebody in there as soon as possible because it was doing so good. Yeah, that place is always hopping. Yeah, the lease is good. It's $5,000 for six months. And that includes the apartment upstairs. Wow. What's the matter, Ma? You still depressed about the Finleys? Hey, did they thaw them out? Mm, I already asked. No can do. All I'm hearing today is bad news. Ricky, honey, there's something I need to tell you about the lottery. We're sharing it with so many other people, we only won $5,233.35. $5,000? $5, $5, oh, sorry about that, Crystal. Not half as sorry as I am. Well, you know what they say about people winning the lottery? A million bucks is a million problems. Well, I'd be willing to take the risk. Well, listen, I gotta get back to the end. Thanks for the drink, Ricky. Cheer up, Crystal. Cheer up. Oh, honey, there was so much I wanted to do for you. But $5,000, that's not enough to pay for college, send you on a trip to Europe, or even rent a new apartment for Randy. It's enough to rent the Finley's diner. What? Joe just told me that we could rent the diner and the apartment above it for six months for 5,000 bucks. After what happened to the Finley's, I think that place is jinxed. So we'll stay out of the freezer. Well, for sure we can't serve chicken fried steak. You can wait tables. So can I. And you cook a little bit. What about Randy? You really are serious. It's a great deal. That place always has business. And if you and I and Randy lived there and worked there, it would be like eight is enough. Oh, honey. Maybe it's a way I could really make things up to you. Make what up to me? So what does Randy do? Does he cook? Well, he makes a pretty mean omelet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will you tell me what's going on? Honey, we want you to cook lunch. Huh? Ricky wants an omelet. Or a burger or a chicken fried... Sorry. Remember, no chicken fried steak on our menu. Wait, what menu? Make it two omelets and put cheese in mine, okay? What, what are you talking about? Just trust me on this. Mm, looks great, Randy. <laughs> yeah, honey, this is beautiful. So, how are you with uh, burgers, pancakes, meatloaf? Will you tell me what all this is about? Jeez. <laughs> okay, okay. Ricky had this great idea about what to do with the money. <laughs> Make me your living chef. No. The Cedar Lake Diner's sitting empty right now. The old people who used to run at the Finleys, they got caught in the freezer when they were looking for chicken fried steak. Oh, I love chicken fried steak. <laughs> well, get over it. Anyway, it's for rent for $5,000 for six months. It's a perfect way to make money on what we've won. I mean, lots of people eat at that diner every day anyways. Yeah, and if we reopen it really soon, we'll have all the regular customers and maybe even some new ones too. You cook, Mom and I wait tables, and we all live in the apartment upstairs. All three of us? Yes. I don't know, Ricky. Oh, come on, Randy. We'll have a cool time. Guaranteed. And you and Mom should be together. I called the real estate man that's handling the place, and he said the Finley's Ken's gonna come and get their stuff out this week, and we can take a look at it. This is going way too fast. Do I smell food? Like an omelet? Oh, would I ever. Sissy never did serve me lunch. Go on, honey. My first hungry customer. <laughs> Crap off my bed. Listen, Rita, I'm moving in here. You got no right. You're moving in? Oh, I'm not getting stuck with you and Minnie. You think I want to live with that poor excuse for a thief? But we haven't got any choice. Come on! Ow! <sighs> Listen, Rita, I don't care how upset you are about that twin sister of yours. You're not going to take it out on me. Don't mention that loser, you hear? Is there a problem? No, Officer Patterson. I'd be more than happy to move back to my old cell. You know that's impossible, Lil. Well, then you better get this top dog here a muzzle. Rita, I know you're upset about your sister, but you can't take it out on the other women. Sissy just called. What is it? What'd she say? She's on her way to see you. <sighs> better be good news. If I'm lucky, Roxy hit the road. <laughs> I can't, Monique. I can't. Well, of course I want to, but I have to work this afternoon. <sighs> Do you really have to take that nonstop to Barcelona? 
Well, how about when you come back? Oh, we're just gonna have to make the best of it then. So you think about me, and I'll think about you, and then it'll just make it that much more special when we finally get together. <laughs> I know. Okay, just call me when you get back. Yeah, love you too. Bye. <laughs> Do all your dates believe that garbage? You know, Maria, if you went out with me, you'd find that everything that I say is true. You must have the IQ of all the girls you date. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Look, Torres, I'm not your type, and you're not mine. Well, you'll never know until you try. I hate used merchandise. You know, you have, you have your first day off next week, don't you? Maybe I'll just show up at your doorstep with some flowers. Yeah, we have and... to find my doorstep first. Well, where do you live, anyway? Why do I bother with you? Just leave me alone. I'm glad the charges got dropped. I was feeling guilty enough you spending one night in jail because of me. Oh, that's all behind us now. But something has come back from the past to haunt us. Ben Cronin showed up at the end today. Ben Cronin? What else does he want? He got his money. I've never told you this before, Reed. I didn't want to upset you. About half the money in Tony's boat was missing by the time Cronin got to it. What? I never even got my ten or fifteen thousand. What? Pipe down. Now, I never told you, but the reason I know about that money is that I was there when Goddard found it in Tony's boat. We were going to take off to Rio until we found out that Cronin was threatening the rain and the kids. I don't believe this. But once I knew about that, I couldn't take off with it. Well, I did try to help myself to ten or fifteen grand, just enough for Debbie to go on the run, but. I got arrested first by Jerry. So you didn't take any of the money? Not a cent. And now Cronin's after you again? I'm afraid so. Well, you have any idea who stole it? No, not a clue. How much is missing? Ten million. <laughs> That's a lot of dough. April, I think I'm onto something big. Do you remember Roscoe telling us how Ben Cronin came to Cedar Lake to get this laundered drug money that was stolen from him years ago? Well, from what I have heard, I think it's still here. Mm -hmm. And little old Roxy Lawrence might just be the gal to find it. So, you live in Cedar Lake, huh? This is none of your business. <laughs> you know, I've never been up there. I heard it's really nice. Yeah, keep it nice and stay away. What is your problem, Trent? What is my problem? Yeah. Torres, the only reason why you are doing this is because I'm not falling all over you just like all the other girls. Look, I don't play those kind of games. This isn't a game. I mean, I really do find you very, very... Has offended you. No, it just bored me. Now, what is this crap Maria told me about Roxy and Debbie going jogging this morning? Says you promised to keep Roxy away from her. Rita, be reasonable. Now, aren't you overreacting about your sister? Sis. Just a little bit? Oh. I don't believe you're saying this. She's been working on you, too, hasn't she? No, but Joe made a good point. None of us has given Roxy a chance, including you. She is not here to do me any favors, all right? I knew that the minute I talked to Debbie last night. She's already trying to turn Debbie against me. Yeah, well, you have to have a little faith in Debbie. She'd never turn against you. Lorraine turned against you. That's a completely different story. It would take a lot for Roxy to get closer to Debbie than you are. You've had a lifetime with her. Yeah. And I made a lot of mistakes in that lifetime. Yeah, but Debbie understands those mistakes. Sis, 
Now, I'm telling you, unless you keep Roxy away from Debbie, she's going to be doing all those mother-daughter things that I should be doing. What? Is that so terrible? I don't... You are worse than Debbie. What? Why won't you listen to me? Because I try to believe the best of people. Well, with Roxy, you're going to have some difficulty. Now, you mark my words, sissy. You can dress her up in a designer gown and, and give her a Gucci purse, but she's still white trash. Debbie! How was driver's ed? I stink at parallel parking. Oh, honey, don't worry about that. It's kind of like learning how to drive with a clutch. Once you get the hang of it, you can't believe it was ever a problem. <laughs> I hope so. Listen, how would you like to go shopping for some new clothes? My treat. We'll go tomorrow morning. And, um, would you be up for a walk right now? Walking and running all in one day? Well, why not? It'll give us a chance to keep getting to know one another. Mm. I don't know. I kind of have a lot of homework. All right. It's okay, sweetie. You let me know if you change your mind. Do you, um, really have that much homework? I don't know, sissy. Mom doesn't want me to have anything to do with Aunt Roxy. I know. But Aunt Roxy is being so nice. Well then, sweetheart, you owe it to yourself to make sure you know all about her. So there's only one bedroom? Uh, the couch is a sofa bed. Oh, what a great room. It's so <laughs> nice and homey, and it couldn't be handier for work. Well, what do you folks think? <clears throat> Don't look at me. Uh, so we get to keep the furniture, too, right? That's right. All right. <laughs> you won't regret this, honey. <laughs> well, if you folks can have a check for me in the morning, you can move in tonight. We'll have it to you in the morning, and we'll sign the papers, too. Great. Thanks, Clem. You're very welcome. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Uh, listen, since there's only one bedroom, I can stay down at the bait shop, or maybe I can move back in with Brad and Joe. No way. This is your idea, and we want you here, don't we, Randy? But, Crystal, there's no privacy. Well, he can have the bedroom. 
Really? Well, you liked it when you came in, and that's the least we could do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, but how are we going to have privacy? Honey, I know Rick has given his blessing on our unwed union and all, but I can never do anything with you as long as he's under the same roof. Oh, Crystal. I can't lose his respect. We're just going to have to stay celibate, that's all. Oh, I'm going to love this. We ought to hit the sack, huh? Sounds good to me. believe how long it's been since I held you next to me. I can't believe it either. Oh, Crystal, I've missed you so much. Oh, and I've missed you. We can make up for lost time. Oh. Randy, no. No, honey, Ricky. He's not a baby. He knows we don't just kiss and hold hands. Honey, I'm, I'm too embarrassed. Well, there's no way I can lay beside you and, and not touch you. I'll just sleep over here. Maybe it's best. By the time I got my hands on the money, there was only 10 million left. Somebody, somebody stole half of it. And now it's floating around again. I feel like you've been avoiding me all week. If you drink wine with a screw top cap, that's reason enough. Well, you know, I read you so well, I thought it was time that you got to know me. I know all I need to know, Mr. Fisher. Darling, you haven't even scratched the surface. I have an errand to run. What, this time of night? What's late in Cedar Lake is early in Vegas. Oh, right, right. I won't be back. I can wait. Suit yourself. Welcome to Cedar Lake Inn. Thank you. I, uh, I don't have a reservation, but I was wondering if I could get a room for the evening. Certainly. Good. I can get you a Lakeview room if you just sign the register. Ooh, Lakeview, that's perfect. Room five. Okay, could I also get a late supper for two? Sure, let me give you a room service then. No, uh, that won't be necessary. How about, um, cold poached salmon, asparagus, chocolate mousse, and a bottle of your finest white wine? And some candles, as quick as possible, if you could. Oh, a man who knows what he wants. All right, I'll have it sent up right away. And uh, room five is upstairs to your left. Thanks. Sissy? We have a room service order. Joe, can you do me a favor? 
Did you get a bottle of wine from the cellar? Our very best? Sure. <clears throat> very romantic. Mm -hmm. Is it honeymooners? Actually, the gentleman checked in alone. What is it? S stay here. I'll get it. We didn't order movers. Here. Thank God the people at the end told me you just moved here. Uh, who are you? Oh, Randy, this is Trixie. Trixie, this is Randy. Hi. Hi. Honey, I have to leave town real fast. Oh. You understand, don't you? I sure do. I just want to make sure you got your stuff. Hey, thanks a lot. All right. See you later. Bye. What is this stuff? Well, back when I was at Woman's State, I stored a bunch of junk with Trixie. What kind of junk? Oh, just junk. I'll put it away tomorrow. Well, we can't leave it here. I better put it away now. Honey, we got to be cooking and waiting tables tomorrow by 6 a.m. We got to get some sleep. All right. Good night, honey. Good night. Good night. Joe, what? thanks for taking the room service up. Oh, you're welcome. With all the candles he's got going on up there, it looks like he's got quite a romantic dinner. Mm. So where's the girl? Maybe he's courting a ghost. <laughs> that scares me. You're afraid of ghosts, Holly? Oh, Maria! I've got your dinner warming in the oven. Oh, sissy, thanks, but I am just too tired to eat. Another tough day, huh? Yep. And you know that Fisher replacement, he is really getting on my nerves. He just won't take no for an answer. Mm. Look, I'm going to go to bed. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night Maria. Maria. Funny place to run an errand. How'd you get in here? Same way you did. What's the problem, Roxy? Don't want those nice people upstairs to know that you're visiting? Well, what do you got to say? Sure looks inviting. How about it, Maria? I didn't bring my swimsuit. Yeah, well, neither did I. Why are you talking to me this Because way? I love you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but I don't know how I can do that if there's a mystery between us. <laughs> 